It just made me extremely anxious. The whole house were on eggshells. It was hard to, to go up to somebody and say, you know, this is really bad because it was just kind of part of our life. One time he assaulted me, bit my finger, so I had to go to the GP, but nobody asked the question. Leaving the GP without anybody offering me any help just reinstated the belief that there is no help out there for me. I have made my bed, I have to lay in it. The question that the research addresses is how we can better support healthcare professionals to better support their patients affected by domestic violence and abuse. The method that we used to test out the training to find out whether it was working or not was to recruit some general practices in two areas, one in the southwest and one in London. And the training was delivered by a clinical lead in each area, so a local practicing GP, and also by a specialist worker, an advocate educator working in a specialist violence against women and girls organisation. We aim for the clinicians to have a better awareness and understanding of the signs and symptoms of domestic violence abuse and that's not just in theory but what that actually looks like when patients come in and the sort of signs and symptoms they are presenting with from a health perspective. If they've described some anxiety symptoms or panic symptoms um, then once asking more detail around those symptoms I might say some people who experience anxiety and panic it can be because they're feeling afraid of somebody or controlled by somebody could that be something that's going on for you and then you've sort of taken the labour of all those difficult words and all you need them to say is yes or maybe or give you a look and then you've got your way in to ask a bit more. Um, when I first started talking to Laura, I didn't really say very much because of my previous experiences. But Laura got that immediately and she kept probing, but not in an intrusive, annoying kind of way, in a way that made me think, yeah, you really get me, you really understand. So the referral pathway that is then available to clinicians is a simple online form that goes through their normal GP systems. They're also aware that within a few days the advocate educator will be able to um, try and make, make contact with the, with the individual that they're referring. We use routinely collected data from 205 individual general practices in the four boroughs that commissioned IRIS and one neighbouring borough that didn't commission IRIS. This data was collected over a year prior to implementation and then during and after implementation. Our research shows sustained effectiveness of IRIS over four years. Referrals made by clinicians to domestic violence and abuse service providers increased by over 30 times. In the neighbouring borough that didn't commission IRIS, referrals did not increase. I picked up probably hundreds of cases of domestic abuse and it's actually surprised me, even with all the figures that I learned about in the training, quite how much there was out there. It's been a huge relief to then be able to get those people through to the right support. The IRIS research has shown that we can develop it into a commissionable model that supported thousands of women and supported and changed the practice for thousands of clinicians. We also know that IRIS is cost saving for society and we're able to demonstrate that not only under trial conditions but also in the real world in the IRIS services that are working right now today. It would have been helpful if somebody just said, is everything okay? Yeah, that makes me feel quite emotional actually. It's really strange, I'm no longer there. But just that question, is everything okay? It, it, yeah. My life is so different, the children are happy. Zach's anxiety has gone right down. He's done so well at school. They can play, they can shout, they can, there's, the rules have gone. And it's all thanks to Laura making that happen, so yeah, I'll always be really grateful to her.